Oh, hi there, and welcome back to Inside Tracks. If this is uh, not your first time, and welcome if it is uh, your first time. Uh, please do uh, subscribe if you haven't already, uh, like it uh, if you like the video, or comment um, if you think you need to know more, tell me whether I need to know more, or just uh, generally make some kind of interesting uh, fact. So, um, what we're going to look at today is um, there are all sorts of types of horse race um, out there. Um, and I'm just going to explain what types there are um, and does it make a difference uh, to the way in which you're going to trade and of course the answer is of course it will uh, make a difference the way you're going to trade because information is power and knowing about what sort of races are out there and what the intricacies, intricacies, intricacies of them are will make you a better trader. So um, what types of races are there? Um, well, the very first race that a horse will, will be entered into is a race called a maiden. And a maiden is exactly what um, it, it sounds like. Um, a race is restricted to horses that have never won a race under that specific code. So uh, you can get maidens over the jumps, but we're talking about flat racing at the moment. And so in flat races, um, generally speaking, you have two-year-olds um, having their first race and they will be in a maiden race. Um, now what you can get is uh, occasionally horses that uh, don't win for quite some time. Um, uh, they can race for 10, 12, 20, 30 races without um, ever winning. And so you can get uh, three-year-old maidens as well and um, occasionally four-year-old maidens, but not very often. So you two-year-old and three-year-old maidens are generally what you're talking about. When you get into three-year-old maidens, these are horses that haven't won for quite some considerable time. Next up, novice. Uh, novice is slightly different. Um, it's open to maidens, um, but also open to uh, those horses that have won a race or two. Um, the usual Usually the winners have to carry extra weight, a penalty, and that will depend on the conditions of the race as to what that penalty incurs. Generally speaking, the older the horse, the higher the penalty. Um, now, horses are no longer eligible for some novice events once they have raced more than a specific number of times. So we're, we're trying to get out of novice races, those uh, maidens that keep uh, racing and racing and racing. Um, and uh, novice races tend to be of a slightly higher quality, therefore, tend to be uh, maidens who haven't lost too often and uh, it, it, it smattered into those uh, ranks are uh, horses who have won maybe once or twice. So novice events tend to be slightly better quality. Sellers. Um, now this could be a handicap or a non-handicap, um, as we all know, um, uh, and as I've all told you and in other videos you know that um, uh, handicap races uh, tend to produce less favourites as winners than non-handicap races. Um, non-handicaps tend to uh, deliver you a higher percentage of favourites as winners. So that's number one. Number one thing to, to, to notice, if you haven't seen the video already, go and have a look at it. Um, you will find, if you're a favorite backer, you should be uh, backing non-handicap races, not handicapped. The key element is the winner of a seller is offered for auction. Wow, that's what it says on the tin. In the uh, winner's enclosure post-race, uh, all beaten horses in a seller are available to to claim, uh, claim or to, to, to bid for, by the same methods outlined in the claiming races. So there you go, a seller is just a way of, in which um, often stables will try and get rid of horses they don't want to keep long term. Sellers can be, um, interestingly enough, uh, places where you can pick up a bargain. Uh, a horse can win a seller and then go on because it uh, has won a race with a bit of confidence, put in the hands of a better trainer and can well be a place where you can pick up a horse for very little money that will give you some fun and some winners. Claimer. Now, in a claiming race, every horse in a claimer can be bought after the race for a price registered at the time of entry. 
and that that price that um, is registered before the race is one of the factors dictating the weight each horse carries. So the higher the price, the higher the weight to be carried. So this is the way in which someone could also lower the price. Um, again, it's a way of getting rid of a horse if you don't want it. You can lower its price um, and therefore take weight off its back and give it a higher chance of winning. So um, uh, basically uh, claimers and sellers are one and the same except in a claimer uh, you can uh, ultimately reduce the price uh, of your horse, have a knockdown bargain um, because one, you offer it for a low price, two, it carries less, three, it wins. So often then um, it gets purchased after the race. Now, not often um, do you get a situation where there are no bids, but sometimes you do, or there's a friendly claim uh, and one is placed on the horse. Uh, that's that's a, a claim that's put on a horse by the uh, existing connection. So, so in other words, you can often find that a claimer race, uh, the connections want to win it. They reduce the weight of the horse. They put in a friendly claim and uh, basically they win the race, they win the prize money, and then they claim back their horse and they have a horse then that has won and is more valuable. Again, it's a place where you can pick up a bargain um, if you know the rules. Handicap, very straightforward. Horses are allocated weight according to the handicap rating. Rating is given after three races, um, after the horse has won three races or after it's won. Um, and uh, as you'll know from my uh, video on handicapping, uh, that sometimes low ratings can be given to horses that are being put into races that are either too short on ground that isn't suitable or in uh, on race courses that, that the horse doesn't like um, in order to make it look like it's not a good horse, get a low rating and then it comes into a handicap and wins. There are maiden handicaps and uh, novice handicaps and combining the principles of handicap with the restrictions of those types of races. So handicaps can be also uh, just, just with maidens or with uh, those who have won once or twice. Now this is a new one. Um, uh, this is a very interesting development from the BH, BHA and could prove to be quite a nice one to follow optional claiming handicaps. Now the BHTA, uh, sorry, the BHTA, BHA is to trial a new type of race known as an optional uh, claiming handicap and a bid to diversify the race program and create more opportunities for horses in the events that in the in events that are not based solely on the handicap rating. So in other words, um, you can have a handicap rating but two horses in that handicap um, at for instance, uh, starting in July, it says down here, um, the 18th uh, at Yarmouth, the 10 race trial is pitched at horses rated between 80 and 90. So it's not a bad uh, horse that's, that, that's in the 80s and 90s. Generally speaking, a horse rated 90 will be worth somewhere around about 30,000 pounds. Horses rated 80s are somewhere around about 25,000 pounds. So um, what you can do is, um, uh, your horse is, is say rated 80 and you want to try and win this race uh, to prize funds 30,000 is quite a lot of money on, on, on offer so you want your horse to win the race so what you do is you um, instead of your horse being worth 25,000 pounds you say actually I'll accept a bid of say 20,000 pounds and that will take then six or seven pounds uh, up to seven pounds it is so you can take seven pounds off so you could run your horse that is rated 80 at 73 which of course will give it a very very good chance of winning the top prize um, but when it does win then it has to be sold at the price um, which would be a lower price than you'd have if you'd run it at 80. so um, it's an interesting uh, initiative it means that uh, some trainers will uh, be looking and saying, great, um, I've got a decent horse here. Uh, I want to win some prize money for my, tr for my owners um, and my owners might even uh, get to claim the horse back out at the end of it. So it could be a nice win-win all round um, and uh, so on. Uh, the, probably one of the outcomes of this, this uh, optional claiming handicap 
is that we'll see some decent horses going for relatively low sums uh, of you know something like twenty thousand pounds and uh, that will give people a chance to get into racing with a decent horse at a relatively low price so it's, it's another way in which um claiming uh low weights can lead to horses being sold for decent or low low prices and uh, of course people like godolphin and so on will look to potentially get rid of some of their cast offs that aren't going to make it into the uh, better class races the uh, pattern races so interesting 10 horse trial july and august this year first starts july 18th yama so look out for it and uh, we'll see how it goes Classified stakes races. Um, it's basically, uh, you can get into these races. They're, they're higher class races. Eligibility for these races is determined by horses handicap mark, but the weight carried is not. So, um, so basically what they're saying is we're trying to get um, uh, horses of a similar um, uh, ability but we're going to make them uh, compete on level terms. That's fine. Uh, what you're looking for in a classified stakes race is improvers. Um, so you're looking for a horse that has a handicap rating below another horse in that race, but, but the horse in the race with a higher handicap rating is exposed, and the one with a lower handicap rating is unexposed. That's the way in which you try and pick your winner. So uh, again, it makes a difference to how you go about your trading. Auction races you can find horses from the less expensive end of the sales spectrum. Race conditions dictate that the pri that price race conditions dictate that price limit. So the price is based on the sale price of an individual horse, and weight al allowances may be granted for horses purchased at various increments below the stated value. So what happens here is that um, if you buy a horse cheaply you can put it into an auction race and have your horse uh, carry less weight because you paid less for it. So if you're up against, uh, it tends to be less expensive end of the range, as it says. So, so say I spent five grand on my horse and you spend 15 grand on your horse, your horse will be carrying more weight than mine, but my horse might be just as, as, as good as your horse because it doesn't mean a lot, uh, the purchase price. So again, auction races are interesting because you're looking at um, has someone got a bargain? Has someone got a horse that's that's been bought cheaply, but is actually quite a good horse? And you're looking for that in the betting and in your analysis of the race. Oh Lord, median auction races. Well, this is this is just the same as an auction race, but um, uh, is is talking about the horses uh, uh, sire, and um, so horses by a sire who generate a median price of not more than the value in the race condition so it's all about con the conditions of the race again it's not about what you purchase the horse for it's about what the sire's average selling price was of his of his of his um offspring so it, it's it's getting more complicated now um and sometimes you will find um that uh knowing the particularly of these types of races knowing exactly what the uh, conditions are will give you a far better view and um, when you see in the uh, papers that it says the conditions of the race favor this horse then that's because the paper has read the bloody conditions of the race and realizes that um, uh, you know you have a, a, a horse here that has um, all the conditions of the race going in its favor um, i.e. It's, it's sire generated a medium price which is low therefore your horse is, is carrying less weight but it has done more than our horse blah 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 and so you will find that these are the types of races that you don't know about but somebody does now um apprentice and amateur races now we all know that these exist and, and it's very straightforward. The, the races are confined by the jockey type or, 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 or um, they, the, the jockey will define um, uh, you know, what, what weight the, the horse carries. So either an, an apprentice, i.e. a professional jockey starting out on their career, who haven't written out their claim, or an amateur, a jockey without a professional license, will ride with allowances given to those with a lower number of winners. 
So what we're talking about here is trying to work out if you've got a very talented um, chap uh, coming into racing, uh, you know, you get these apprentices who are very, very talented. They, uh, generally speaking, an apprentice would, would have a seven pound allowance in normal races. Sometimes they get a 10 pound allowance in apprentice races when, they, when they're uh, riding against their fellow apprentices. So sometimes you can find a jockey who, who is beyond his, his experience, uh, has much more uh, talent than, than his experience would allow, but is getting a whole load of weight um, off the horse. And of course, um, the horse could be an extremely good horse getting, uh, who it only needs to be point, pointed and shot, you know, I mean, a point and shoot job um, with an apprentice who isn't very good, but getting a whole lot of weight off his back. So he just points and shoots it and and, and in it goes. So, so again, you're looking at um, uh, trying to work out, is there a jockey there getting excessive amounts of weight? Is there a horse there um, with a, who is very talented getting an excessive amount of weight? And do you believe that jockeys make a big difference or not? And I tend to say that they do. A good jockey, a talented jockey, could be worth, uh, well, by definition, if, a, if, a, if, a, uh, uh, if an apprentice jockey is going to get seven pounds in a, against his uh, senior professionals, then the senior professional is worth, is worth seven pounds. Uh, that, that's just by definition. So, um, but if you have a Sylvester D'Souza against, um, a, a, you know, a, an apprentice jockey riding his second race, um, there's probably, a, a, I mean, a, a load more, you know, he's not worth seven pounds, D'Souza is worth 15 or 20 pounds. So what you're looking at in an apprentice race is, uh, are you looking at one end of the spectrum, which is a, a young jockey with a whole load of weight taking off a, a decent horse, um, with with more uh, with more uh, capability than than his his few rides uh, would suggest, or are you looking for um, uh, a an experienced apprentice and an experienced amateur who are basically riding at professional standard, who um, are giving away less weight than they should do um, because they're still apprentices. So I tend to go for, um, and it's no secret in, for instance, amateur races. I would go for the best amateurs there. Uh, Serena Brotherton, um, uh, for instance, um, is worth to me uh, ten pounds uh, at least over any other female jockey. She is that good. Simon Walker is worth you know ten pounds or more versus uh, an inexperienced um, uh, other. Uh, amateur even against uh, a decently experienced amateur is worth uh, quite a few pounds more so if you come to an amateur race and you show me a, a, dec a decent enough horse um, with a Serena Brotherton or, or a Simon Walker on it uh, I will back that versus uh, um, an inexperienced amateur who may well be taking seven or more pounds off off its back. So uh, again, this would very much affect the way in which you think about trading and the way in which you go about your trading and the strategies you use. Okay, um, I think that's a lot. Uh, there are, of course, um, other race types. Um, ones I haven't mentioned, are, you know, obviously you're getting into the pattern races, which is the group ones, group twos, group threes, and, and the listed races. Those are the higher quality races where Ultimately, um, the, uh, those who are too good to be handicappers uh, uh, want to race against each other on equal, rate, uh, on equal weights and under equal conditions. Uh, sometimes you get uh, females getting uh, uh, an allowance in, 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 in pattern races. Um, uh, sometimes you get a group uh, penalty in listed races. But ultimately, um, in the pattern races, you are really talking about saying, you know, in the derby, they all carry the same weight. They're all they're all uh, racing against. You know, it's 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 all racing the same uh, weight. There's no allowances given. There's no uh, uh, you know weight for age or anything else. They're all the same age anyway. But um, no 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 allowances being given. Either. That's it. It's your horse against the next horse at exactly the same uh, weight. And the best, the best man really does win. 
So that, 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 yeah, that, 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 that to me is, 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 is a given in, 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 in pattern races. It's no, so therefore, it's, 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 there's no sort of voodoo about it. Okay, I um, uh, hope that has been helpful. Uh, if it has, subscribe. Um, like it um, and if you have any comments or any other thoughts please do let me know I always will try and answer your questions hope it's been useful very best of luck take care cheers and bye